Hi everybody, my name's Thade. This is XCOM. In case, uh, in case you can't read. Right, so I play a good amount of XCOM. Uh, I've been rotating between Classic Marathon and Impossible Mode over the past few months. Impossible is really punishing, and I just tried about a half dozen of those games, and I got one of them, um, I guess I would say into the third month, and I lost the base game, but my team was really doing well. Um, but otherwise, I usually die within the, you know, lose everybody within the first three to four missions, so I'm really not cut out for Impossible yet, which is sad, um, because I really want to play it. Uh, always Iron Man, let's do Classic, and to shake things up, I'm going to turn on these two, these two second wave options, which make each of the uh, each of the soldiers even more individual. They're going to form their own identities over the campaign. That can't be helped. That's really the beauty of XCOM. But uh, these two options really add a lot to that. So, well, we'll see. You know, every game is different. See, it's hard to tell how that'll pan out. All right. So. North America's easy mode. Uh, Europe is kind of nice when you're uh, doing marathon mode, um, but I stack labs uh, and workshops in marathon mode myself, so it's not, you know, it's not really critical. It's just kind of nice. Asia's awesome because it lets you push um, push your squad size up easier and faster. It's kind of nice. Uh, and if you use shivs like I sometimes do, um, it makes all of their upgrades cheaper. Shiv suppression is really the whole reason to have a shiv. I feel. Also, they're expendable, if expensive to repair. Uh, Africa is sort of obvious, but almost everyone, I think, guns for that, uh, you know, on a serious playthrough. Um, for the mid-game, South America is the thing you pick up when things are going good for you, because it's only two countries. Starting with it would be insane, but they have the world's best coffee, and someone has to defend that. That'd be me. We're moving into Argentina next. And all, uh, the threat there seems to be the most pressing. All seriousness. We picked up a local pick South America because I've, you know, I've never done a game from South America before, so it'll make the game harder if nothing else, right? All right, the paper mill. There's three ways to approach this. I could go along the street like Beagle Rush, I could go straight through the parking lot, or I could go into the building via the warehouse. There's always a pack in the lot that I need to deal with, uh, and two out of three paths um, take me through cars as cover, and the other path brings me into the warehouse and may aggro more than one pack along with the parking lot crew if I'm, if I'm not careful. The moving truck's decent cover and concealment, and it falls apart in a convenient way, so I'm going to use that. And I've got my whole team behind this truck. It's actually, I really don't like this approach anymore. Because <laughs> I don't have a sniper or a heavy. I can't remember the last time I did this with just rookies. Let's make contact on the side of the truck so that they're not firing on the cab right away. Interesting. Yep, I know. Shh. I think I heard something. You're gonna get flanked if you step out there. I wish you could see around the corner. Huh? That's interesting. Is that pickup truck a reasonable range for you? Yeah, you can reach the pickup truck. I don't know if I want you to, but you can. Alright, now peekaboo. And I was totally wrong. They're not there. Or maybe they pathed the way. Okay. What was that? Um, I'm hoping it's a second pack and not like a really long, really long tour circuit. All right, let's do this. There they are. We're witnessing something never before seen in recorded history. Oh, that's almost too good. 
too good to be true, but I can't. There's no way I can get anyone close enough for a grenade right now, is there? If you go here, you can throw... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10... A grenade is 10 spaces, so I'm just counting the spaces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That will throw right to that car. Um, if you trigger a group inside, we're kind of kind of buried. But if you're right there... That'll blow that car and get that sectoid in the same shot. Do you have, like, anything? Now your offense 55, but you're the one in position. Let's take a shot with you since I'm going to grenade them. He's down. I didn't even look at your odds because I know I've guaranteed killing them. When the oh, hi, Valen. We should look closely for any fragments that could be salvaged for our own development programs. I'm trying to talk to YouTubes. Thank you. You know, in the expansion, they're going to give us the ability to shut that off. It's going to be an option that something like disable uh, tutorial -y mode um, so that all the things that are them telling you how to play the game but are veiled as if they're being snide to you, uh, those are going to go away. Hopefully that includes, you know, the escortees who like to rip the camera away from you every turn and yell about how they, you know, it's not fair if I have all the fun. Um, I'm going to call that the shut the hell up volin button. You have event 75, Mr. Deng. Deng? Lock Deng. Alright, well, you, sir, are a bamf. I can't see the other sectoids, but I know where they are. Let's get yelled at by Volin for blowing them up. Oh, yeah, that'll do it. That'll do it right there. Catch. Commander, you may want to instruct your men to exercise restraint when using explosives. No, I'm not done with that. While certainly effective at killing aliens, they also destroy the artifacts we're hoping to recover from the bodies. Just something to consider. I had never considered that. You know, no one has ever made that point to me before. Especially not you. Was that your car, Rollin? I hope that was your car. Because she would definitely be way more upset about weapon fragments than she would be about her car. That's how she rolls. Alright. Um, so at least one more pack. And I think I heard them in the warehouse. What's your aim? 70. There's a 55. Another 55. And I know we've got a 70 or 75 over there. There's something out there. Yeah, they're on the loading dock, I bet. Some people complain about, you know, the lack of random maps in this game. And, you know, I mean, I've read tons of interviews with the game developers. And, you know, I am a developer myself. So I sympathize with, you know, you know, the cold fact that they just didn't have the resources to commit to get everything they wanted. And they wanted to have random maps. Um, but thematically, not having random maps is is actually okay um, in my mind because any any real spec ops team uh, would have you know at least sort of the topography of where they're striking. You know, they'd know it pretty well <laughs> before they showed up on site. Like they would know the layout of the building, not exact specifics, of course, um, but they would know generally um, you know where the entrances were, exits, um, what kind of what kind of crap was in each room, etc. So the fact that my operatives have, you know, not perfect knowledge of the map and then walk in here, I'm able to forgive them for that. And on impossible mode, and even classic, in a way, you kind of need that knowledge. Because this game can get really abusive. Oh, was that a car? Another car? Was that your car, Valen? I'm not sure if that was Valen's car. Alright. Um... You're my flank team right there, because you're closer, so let's see if we make contact here. Hello. Nope. I'm going to break my own rule here. I'm going to break Hmm. Got it. Got Scared. Got my eyes on. They might be in the trailer? Uh-ho, you left the warehouse while I was sneaking into it. 
think. Yeah, it would really be crappy to be pincered. So I'm gonna make doubly sure. Okay, it looks like they did in fact leave the wear. Oh! <laughs> I was so wrong. Off to a good start. So I'm not pincered, but kind of in a bad position. He's easily flying from there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I think. Six or seven, yeah. They can't be overwatched, though. If you go there, you're in a great position to counterattack. You have a grenade. You're going to take a lot of fire. Ooh, flank shot, 70%. Probably. Um, you're in a good spot right there. 35 is not great odds for you. And you can't see from there? It's too far away, huh? How about there? Negative. I'll take the flank shot, reduce it to two. Nice. He's not a threat, but there's more sectoids in there. And they're going to mine merge one and send him out as a suicide drone to soak up bullets and hopefully kill somebody. One merge, here comes the merged. Oh -ho -ho! You guys aren't messing around. What was that? Well, that would be the guy who cast merge, and he can't overwatch. So, you guys should definitely move in to say hello. Can't be on Overwatch. There he is. He's like right in the front of the truck. No one can see that little sectoid. Blast him. Let's humor Valon and go for weapon fragments. Besides Delgado here. Oh man, Delgado. I was just about to deify you to the viewers. Uh oh, and that's more like rookie overwatch. Okay, now he can definitely be on Overwatch, because he only moved once. Ugh, I can't get anyone to that door. He's definitely, like, right here. Uh, boo. There you are. That's interesting. It's not great odds. Okay, from there, can he get in the building easily? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, he can't. He's got the dash. Which means you can dash. And then next turn you can say hello. Uh, that's not great odds. Hunker down and if he advances on you for a flank, you guys blow his head off. Yep. Hunker down, defense 80, accuracy 60. Should be negative 20 to hit me, but sometimes they still hit you. I don't know how that math works out. But hunkering down does mean he's immune to crits, so. Now, we'll have our vengeance. Okay, what's your offense? Is not that great. Who has a really good offense? 70, 55, 
75, but sitting out next mission. Well, let's let's go ahead, Mr. Dang. You've proven your ah. Uh, well, you got you got some kills already. Hi. Yeah, that's how this works out. I'm flanked and you're not flanked. Let's let's all have a look at this now. I'm flanked. You're not flanked. I'm right next to you. Are you immune to flanks? Is that how this is gonna work out? Let's all say hello. Yeah, I got you flanked. I just want to really rub in how dead this jerk is. Forty. Oh, XCOM. All right, well, I'll take a shot. Yep, that's hilarious. No oh, shot wide. Yeah, I'm gonna, everyone's gonna miss him, and he's gonna cap someone. See you in hell. Good work out there, Strike. Thanks. That's a full set. That's nice. The assault class serves as our front line. They're the first ones into a fight and the last ones out. The heavy weapons specialists. Oh, my sniper has M64. It's not tragic. But the rocket but launcher it's not great. There are demolitions experts. Our snipers specialize in dealing massive amounts of damage from afar. Oh, thanks, Bradford. But I'm good. Um, to engineering. Commander to engineering. Armor, please. Commander. I don't know what she was saying. I don't care. I do actually know exactly what she was saying. Commander, I realize that the levels of our teams are valuable, but I'm still going to bring it up. Some room to grow up here. Uh, but if we really want to expand our facilities, we're going to have to start excavating beneath the base. Why would you put the steam where I want to build my uplinks? This is a great little place for uplinks. I got to go really deep for steam otherwise. I could actually do a power stack right here and then exploit steam later on. Yeah, let's start you. On their way to begin construction. I'll and let's build the satellite. Facility is operational. And you're off. Commander, we've picked up multiple requests for assistance. Abductions in progress are marked on the hollow globe. Uh, let's go for... How long are they? Satellite 17 days, that's doable. Let's have the first abduction. Oh, I might need engineers because... No, I definitely need money, I need uplinks. Let's do cash. Good thinking. My, uh, my old standby was to go and uh, just get engineers in the first shot whenever possible. Uh, because they reduce build time on things. But I really, really need to get my base rolling. And if it makes the game harder on me, that's cool too. Cause check things up. You might be asking yourself, hey, are you giving everyone red instead of color coding your troops? Wait, do you really have like a beard shape going on? That's that's it, man. Let me uh You've earned yourself a hat, we'll say that. Nope, nope, nope. Yeah. You're just a random rookie they gave me? Yeah, you are, Mr. Washington. All right, well, no offense, Mr. Washington, but I'd like to see what else we have before I just kind of grab you. Uh, it's not so bad. Aim 70, Mr. Dubois. Dubois, Mr. Dubois. Okay. Nakamura, 60. Another 70. Solov. Oh, Solov Yova. This is totally going to be a show about watching me try to pronounce and then butcher the names of other, other nations here. Bunch of aim 70s, no aim 80s. Not my day. Um, let's take, let's take a will 29. 
I'll wait later until I have Iron Will and I'll bring her out there. This is good, Mr. Dubois actually has a really high will. Mr. Dubois, you are money, sir. You're going to the field. Here. This helmet. Yeah, where was I? Mooney. Let's say Japan. Right now, go fly, fly across the globe. All right, that's it for this. Go tune in next time when we find out whether or not the color of a man's shirt controls his destiny. Thanks for watching. See you next time.